Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Simon Volt. I'm the Director of Sales here at V Technologies, and we appreciate you joining today's webinar. Today's webinar, we're going to focus around Starship for Dynamics GP and how we can automate your shipping process. Along with myself, I have Chris Sletner, our sales executive uh, for our GP space, as well as Scott Mills from Visible Supply Chain, um, who is our third party partner for Post Office. And he'll talk to you more today regarding how we can help you save in regarding your post office shipping compared to maybe your FedEx or UPS shipping you might be doing today. So we do have a lot of good information to share with all of you today. Um, I'm going to uh, take care of a couple housekeeping rules. Um, we're going to leave questions to the end. Um, everyone is in mute status at the moment. Um, however, um, we will allow you to ask questions at the end. If you have questions along the way, um, there is a little box next to your name. Please raise your question. You can type it into the dialog box um, and we will get to as many questions with time permitting um, at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce you to Chris Sletner, um, have him take you through a quick presentation and then we'll have Scott speak to all of you and then we'll follow up with a demo of Starship and GP. All right, so Chris, uh, the floor is yours. Great, thanks Simon. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, topic at hand is why would you want to consider moving from ship gear to Starship? So we're going to go through a few things here on the two different applications and uh, talk to you about uh, some of the enhanced features that Starship can offer you, in particular with the GP integration. Uh, as you know, Shipgear is a uh, plugin that's available to integrate with your UPS World Ship and FedEx Ship Manager program. Um, it supports parcel carriers only, so only those services, doesn't touch freight. Um, there's no item integration, so it's primarily order header information that's flying back and forth from GP. Uh, no other, other additional support for third-party applications, rate shopping, batch processing. It's basically our entry-level model for shipping integration with GP. Uh, with Starship, it has its own user interface, so it takes the place of the carrier platforms, um, offers uh, multiple carrier processing, uh, multi-mode, multi so you're also able to do uh, freight and LTL type shipments. Um, there's line item integration, so we're able to get to uh, item uh, information quantities uh, that are able to uh, be brought over from GP and packed up. Um, that also helps you with international shipping, um, with EDI. So we have uh, plugins for a number of different EDI platforms as well, uh, WMS, as well as uh, rate shopping. So you can do cost comparisons to decide how you want to ship it out, uh, whether that's uh, based on the uh, time in transit or uh, the price. Uh, there's batch processing capabilities, so you're able to process a range of orders rather than going one at a time. And we also have uh, e-commerce uh, extensions to a number of different um, uh, shopping carts and uh, online platforms. Uh, with Starship, there's over 20 different LTL carriers that we offer plugins for. Uh, we also have access to the uh, discounted uh, USPS rates, and uh, Scott will talk to you a little, a little bit about uh, what we can offer on that front. Um, there's more robust ERP integration available with GP. We have, uh, like I said, the ability to get into line item level detail, as well as a SQL extension, which can open up uh, GP extender fields, as well as bolt onto other uh, applications within your GP environment, such as SalesPad, CRM, other shopping carts, service databases. Basically opens up uh, Starship to have bi-directional integration with really any data source on the network that you're using. Uh, you have enhanced tools in order to promote your brand, uh, so you have the ability to have customized labels with uh, your own logo on there. Uh, you can also use the tools within eNotify to help uh, push out uh, promos and literature for um, your company with uh, links back to your shopping cart to kind of redirect traffic uh, back to your, your, uh, your site and uh, including any kind of promos or literature or catalogs that you want to include there. Uh, you have uh, enhanced reporting and analytics with the dashboard that can give you insight into your shipping activity so you can see uh, on-time performance by carriers. Uh, you can do a cost comparison between your cost and your marked up freight to see what your profit and loss margin is on the freight. Um, you also have the ability to get into the data directly through SQL. Uh, Starship has a SQL database as a backend 
uh, that lives on the same SQL server as your GP data, and there's views that are exposed there where you can easily query that with uh, SmartList or SQL reporting services. Um, you can also automate the carrier and rate shopping and the service selection with Starship. There are ship via rules that can take the decision out of the hands of the operator and allow uh, the, the shipper to just go through and process the package and let the system enforce your business logic on which carrier uh, should be selected. Uh, EDI and WMS integration, I mentioned that is available as well, where you can have third-party applications bolted onto Starship at both, en both ends of the fulfillment process. Uh, centralized deployment, uh, meaning that you can have one instance of the software. The ship gear combo with UPS World Ship, FedEx Ship Manager is mainly a desktop application. Starship can be deployed in a central environment, um, so it could be hosted on a server. Uh, of your own or in a in a cloud situation where you're sharing it out to multiple facilities, multiple users with one instance of the software, and they can connect to that through a remote desktop or through Citrix. And the uh, item integration uh, that can be used to help streamline anything that's uh, commodity driven. So shipments that are international, freight, hazmat, we can recycle all of that great uh, item information coming out of GP and use that to help populate the paperwork that's generated out of Starship. Here's uh, just a view at some of the carriers that uh, we offer direct integration to. Uh, there's a number of uh, parcel carriers, both national and regional carriers. Uh, you have UPS, FedEx, DHL, the post office, and uh, also some regional carriers like Speedy and OnTrack. Uh, you can also see from the list here, there's about 20 different LTL common carriers that we have uh, direct integration to. There's an ever expanding list there and we're constantly looking to add uh, additional carriers to our suite of uh, supported services. Uh, that also feeds into the rate shopping, so you'll have visibility to whichever carrier's uh, rates are available on your Starship platform. Starship comes with the post office, so you'll always have that as an option to do a comparison with uh, all of your parcel services. Um, and then you can expand that by adding LTL options as well. With GP, you have uh, rate shopping as well from sales order processing with a hook uh, from the order entry screen to take you into the rate shopping. There's also an API available if you want to embed that uh, rate shopping inside of your environment somewhere further upstream. Email notification can help uh, with, your, um, with your branding and you know, getting the word out about your products, um, you know, having those attachments with uh, product information. Also cutting down on the number of customer service calls that you're going to receive uh, by sending out those uh, email notices automatically that can include a copy of any of the paperwork that's generated at a Starship with a link where the customer can start uh, tracking on their own. Uh, you also have access to the dashboard. It's a browser-based uh, utility that's available for anybody in the organization. You can give them access to that where they can go in and do queries on any of the historical data, look at all the pending transactions. You have crystal reports uh, built in as a way to do some reporting. And all those can be exported to multiple formats, Excel, PDFs. For EDI, uh, Starship can kind of streamline the uh, process of generating uh, your 128 labels by assigning the uh, serialized carton number, as well as uh, printing the, uh, the 128 compliance labels. Uh, those will come printed, collated in the same sequence as the rest of your shipping documents, so you can easily pair those up with the box or the uh, palette that they are assigned to. Um, with that, all of the package um, content data, the order information that we're bringing over from GP that can be shared with a number of different EDI solutions that we've partnered with uh, to kind of streamline the integration. We've got plugins for True Commerce and Redtail. Um, we've also worked with Data Masons, SPS Commerce, DI Central, and Edisoft in the GP space. So we'll dive into that a little bit further uh, at the tail end of the presentation here. Uh, from, from here, I'm going to kick it over to Scott, and he'll talk to you a little bit about the uh, uh, discount uh, rates that are available for USPS. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Uh, just give us a second as we switch presenters here. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Perfect. All right. Um, so, as uh, Chris and Simon said, my name is Scott Mills. I'm an account executive here at Visible, um, and I'm just going to talk high-level um, 
about why you should be using uh, ship gear with these rates and basically uh, why USPS should be part of your shipping portfolio. Um, the examples I'm going to use today are based on priority mail and how that competes with uh, FedEx and UPS. And so just one dynamic of this, uh, just keep it high level um, for the purpose of this presentation. So we'll start with an example. So looking uh, at 2018, obviously everyone knows uh, prices have increased. So um, with UPS and FedEx, they have raised their limits from uh, 732 to 757 on their net mints. But what a lot of people don't aren't aware of are the surcharges that are tacked onto those. So, you know, we always hear, oh, well, they offer, you know, their net min at 757. Why would mine be higher than that? Um, but what people don't focus on are the surcharges, those accessorials that come on the back end. So as an example, as you see here, so we have a priority mail uh, item that is pretty much one pound going to zone one uh, for this example. Um, but it's going from the business to a residential. So you're receiving that 757 net min, but then you're getting a $3.60 residential fee. And then you're also tacking on top of that a 5% fuel charge, a surcharge, which is in this case, 56 cents. So that 757 initial uh, fee that you thought you were getting actually comes out to 1173. Um, but if you're also getting hit with a delivery area surcharge or an extended delivery area surcharge, it can add up to even more. So as we see in this example, it can go from that 1173 to 1523, or if it's going you know, out into beyond the suburbs, 1618. Whereas with USPS on the commercial base, it starts at 655 with no surcharges. So you can see there, you're almost paying double, if, especially if you're hitting that um, EDAF on a delivery that initially started at 757. Um, but those aren't the, all the surcharges that can uh, hit a hit a, a shipment. So here are a list of surcharges that are tacked on um, for 2018. Uh, all of these have risen um, by 4.9 percent. And so I uh, just want you to kind of look at those. 2017 column and the 2018 just for comparison. So the over maximum limits, um, that's uh, anything that is over 150 pounds um, or 165 inches uh, in girth or 108 inches in length. You, it went from in 2017 being $150 to $500. It's a 233% increase. Um, if you're hitting with that additional handling because it's over 70 pounds, in 2017, you were only going to get hit with $10, well, pretty much $11 more. But now in 2018, it rose to $19. And the list goes on and on. And you can kind of see uh, the increases there with the percentages on the far right. But basically, the whole purpose of this is to show you that um, surcharges is where you're actually cost, or where you're actually getting hit with cost. Um, it's not those initial prices. So that's where uh, USPS really saves is because they don't have those additional surcharges. And so in talking about that, let me get back here. Uh, where does USPS win? Obviously, FedEx and U uh, UPS have their um, place in the industry and in the market. Uh, but USPS is more for those smaller in size packages that are under 20 pounds, um, going to zones of one through four for sure. And then if you're going further, you're going to those zones five through eight, as long as it's a lighter weight package, USPS can still make that delivery. Um, a lot of people are wondering, you know, how do you calculate that out? So this dim weight, um, doing the length times width times height, and then the divider there. So for uh, FedEx and UPS, you'll see dims of 139, uh, but for USPS, it's 194. And because that's a higher divider, you're actually saving um, in those cases. And then another thing that USPS really has been taking advantage of is cubic. Um, for those who don't know the, the, the way that you figure out cubic, it's length times width times height divided by 1728. And if that calculation comes below 0.5, then your package qualifies for cubic, which is an additional discount. Um, so that base rate you saw of 655, it can go down to, you know, something around 640, something like that. So small packages under 20 pounds 
going to zones one through four, you should be using USPS. Um, other zones, you know, it's case by case basis. Here's a comparison of rate cards. So uh, on the left side, you're seeing priority mail for USPS. On the right side, you're seeing a rate card from UPS uh, ground commercial at a 10% discount. If you look at the top left, uh, so that one pound zone one to two, you'll see with USPS, it's 655 starting out. And with UPS, even on that discount, it's at 795. And then you see in the yellow where USPS still wins uh, versus that UPS ground. And this is not counting those surcharges. So always keep that in mind. So though this is a direct comparison on the net min, you always have to look at the surcharges in addition. So though, you know, you see kind of at the seven zone five where that's 1560 and the zone set five, uh, seven pounds is 1173. Though UPS wins initially, if you hit any surcharges on top of that, you can still lose uh, out to USPS. And then, of course, for 2018, uh, Visible, we've provided a, a new rate card. So it's called the New Blue. And this is uh, the New Blue rate card on the left and on green versus the national carrier rates at a 20% discount. And then for home delivery, 20 to 25% discount. And as you can see, our New Blue is dominating. Um, these are discounts that are uh, available through V Technologies, and we love our partnership with them. Um, so definitely you should be utilizing this if you're shipping small packages um, and you can see the savings right here. So seeing that 635 for that one pound zone two versus 894 for that zone two and one pound package. I mean, you can see if you're shipping, you know, thousands of shipments within weeks or even within months, you're going to be having uh, large savings. And then another thing that we're excited here at Visible to be able to offer, um, as you look down at the bottom, where we just landed a, an option to be able to offer 8 to 15% discount on international shipments. So if you're doing international shipments and they're still within that small range, definitely reach out, uh, make uh, B Technologies aware of that, and we can see if you're fit for um, receiving that 8 to 15% discount. And then one last thing I wanted to talk about before I uh, hand it back over is our visible shipment analysis. So basically what we offer uh, customers who are shipping between 200 and 300 parcels a day or have 500K uh, in, in parcel spend is a full billing analysis of their FedEx or UPS bill. So what we do is we receive that billing file um, and we put it into our tool and it breaks that down. So it shows what your base charges are on all of your classes of shipments that you're, ship that you're shipping. And then it also shows all the surcharges that are hitting each one of those shipments. And it breaks it down completely. So we're able to really see what you're shipping, what is being charged, and show that, that uh, those calculations to you. What our analysis also does is we show you where USPS wins and where it can save you money. So it's not gonna take over and we're gonna say, you know, everything should be shipped to USPS, but it's gonna take your current uh, shipment profile and say, you know, 12% of your packages should actually be going USPS, and here's the savings that are tied to that amount. Um, I've seen some that, that are as low as, you know, a couple thousand dollars to other ones that are, up in the 50 to $60,000 in savings and then beyond just depending on the portfolio. Um, and I actually got permission for this uh, webinar to offer this analysis to any customer who's interested. So normally we have that pre-qualifier of 200 to 300 parcels a day or that 500K. Um, this is actually analysis that we are offering to anyone on this call. Um, so just, if you're interested in getting that full analysis of your FedEx or US, UPS billing files, contact Simon, let him know that you're interested and he'll in a, a connect us and we can get that done for you. So thank you for your time. And if you have questions, you know, ask them at the end, but I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Chris.
Perfect. Thanks, Scott. All right, we're going to take you through a couple of different um, shipping scenarios here. We'll do both a parcel and a freight shipment and show you some of the other uh, additional utilities that you get with the Starship application. If you're familiar with um, ShipGear as, as you've been using it, um, you'll have the heat import field that comes up inside of um, of WorldShip or you have the clear fields option in FedEx that'll pop up a little dialog box where you can enter in your GP order invoice that whatever that unique document ID is. Here in Starship that's tethered to the left hand side of the screen and you can use that to scan in or enter in whatever that unique sales transaction is that you want to ship against. Um, Starship also has a browse screen here and that can be used to do some sorting through all of your transactions. Um, you can use filters here where we can narrow it down. I have a filter applied here to just look at a specific batch. We'll go ahead and clear that out. This can show you a view of all of your pending sales transactions, and we can do some sorting here on the view, depending on what fields it is that we want to see in the view. You can also add the filters here where you can drill down into a subset of data. But typically, you're just selecting an order um, and then bringing that into Starship. Um, if you set up packaging scenarios where you have um, a relationship between the quantity of an item and a particular box that it goes in, Starship can also allow you to do batch processing where you can bring in a range of transactions and have Starship kind of tick through those sequentially uh, where you're able to manage multiple orders instead of just doing them one at a time. So uh, a little bit different than what you're doing with ShipGear. Um, you know, again, you're inside of the single user interface, you're able to drive um, the logic using the ship method in GP, either from the order header or from the line item level. Um, Starship also has ship via rules where you can have the system kind of enforce the business logic on which carrier and service you want to ship with um, kind of in the background. So it takes the decision out of the hands of the operator and allows the system to in other words, do the thinking for you. Maybe you want to select the carrier based on the price or the destination, uh, the transit time, whatever the business rules are, you can import those into Starship, set those up, and then let the system kind of do the thinking for you. But by default, it's going to do a value translation on the ship method. The carrier and service selected will come over here. Uh, the operator, if you set up the permissions, does have the ability to override that at the point that it gets into the Starship system. So we can always change the carrier and service here. Uh, you'll see the company you're connected to and the sales transaction. Um, your ship method is over here. We can also bring over the collect or third-party billing preferences from the customer card, so you can set that up as a mapping. Uh, time and transit will show here, so you'll know when you can expect the product to be delivered by. Sender information, that is the return address that we're using on the shipment, so you can set up multiple entities within Starship if you have different dropship IDs or business units, uh, you're doing fulfillment on behalf of other customers. You can have that triggered through the integration. The operator can always switch that here. You can have multiple accounts associated to each of your carriers as well. Then the recipient information, this is the ship to address, wherever the product is going to be sent to. Again, that can be pulled from the order header or the line item level within GP. Um, you'll see uh, some indications here next to the address, the green checkbox letting you know that the address has been validated. Uh, Starship offers address validation across the board with all the carriers, uh, regardless of which service it is that you're shipping. So we'll check that as the order is coming in from GP. Um, you'll also see the uh, EDI integration enabled here. If you have uh, any of the EDI modules enabled, uh, you'll see that based on the conditions that you set. Um, the address itself, we can apply some standardized uh, postal formatting to that, so we can abbreviate the street, the boulevard, um, any any of those things. Uh, add these at plus four, uh, capitalize anything if you want to use the standardized postal formatting. Uh, we can also take any of this address information that's been corrected and insert it back into the GP uh, sales transaction as well. Uh, we'll catch, uh, probably most importantly, the zone where it's going to, so any delivery area surcharge um, calculations uh, for uh, additional freight, that'll be captured uh, as part of this, uh, so you're not missing out on residential or rural area uh, fees if you're writing the freight back into GP as part of the invoice. Um, and then we can also produce an exception report. So out of the dashboard, we can let you know over a date range, any of the addresses that have been corrected, you can then take those, go back into your customer card and correct those or back into CRM. So at this point, we're working with a clean address. We've got uh, good information about the, um, uh, 
the, the destination and how it's going to get there. Now we just need to pack it up. So Starship does have a packaging database uh, that can include all the carrier packaging that you're using, as well as your own custom packaging. Um, you can add your own containers to the system. And this is where uh, the dimensional weight uh, comes in, where we can store the dimensions with the types of uh, shipping containers that you're using. So we can factor in the size of the container versus the actual weight. Uh, we also have integration to CubaScan scanner scales that can uh, read the exterior dimensions of your products as they're being shipped out and weigh that and compare it. Uh, so you can see here a pretty, uh, pretty steep difference in price from um, the contents of the package. Uh, so we can see it's 29 pounds, but um, based on the size of the box, the amount of cubic space it's gonna take up in the truck, UPS is gonna bill us for 52 pounds here. So that may be a perfect package that you wanna consider shipping out with the post office. Um, so again, we can capture that here um, with the boxes They can be entered in real time if you um, leave those fields open um, or you can grab that information from CubaScan. We can also set uh, preferences for UPS and FedEx uh, the post office to enter dimensions to make that a required field so you're not skipping past that and potentially leaving money on the table. Uh, down below here you'll see the packaging view. This is where you can see all of the line items that come out, came over from GP. I have a preference enabled that just takes my products and puts them into my most commonly used container. Um, you can leave them loose, you can pack them up. It's not a um, hard and fast rule that you need to do something with the line items. You can always disable those if you choose not to deal with them. The nice thing about using the items is that can drive the paperwork uh, for any kind of you know, commodity uh, driven uh, paperwork for what is displayed on the paperwork, um, what the contents of the packages are, anything having to do with EDI, hazmat, international freight, that'll help uh, your processing out. Um, you can also pack these into individual containers here. Uh, so we're starting on our first box. We can add a second box by clicking on the next arrow. That also allows you to print a label as you click on next. So you can print as you go, or you can wait until the tail end of the process. Um, adding multiple packages can be done here with the repeat function. You can put in a range of packages. You can also copy the weight of a particular container to the other packages as you're adding them. And then you have the add package, delete package icons here. I'm going to go ahead and add a box and we'll take the contents of that and we're gonna distribute this to its own container. So this allows us to record exactly what went into the box. We can feed that back to GP. We can hand it off to an EDI system and then also print out packing lists so we can record exactly what, uh, which items and quantities went into a particular container. So that's associated to the tracking information. Uh, at this point, if we're ready to process, our controls are up here in the toolbar. There's also keyboard shortcuts that can be used to kind of automate the process a little bit further. So you can have uh, a list of barcodes next to the uh, workstation that you can just zap to perform that function. So F5, ship and process will complete your uh, transaction, print out all of your documents. At that point, it's gonna hand off the data to uh, GP, also update your EDI, your e-commerce platform. Uh, next to that, you have the save as draft function or control S that will save the shipment. And then you can stage it and put aside. Maybe you wanna label some product, get it ready to uh, be shipped out at a later date and then come back to it. Um, if you know a particular day that you're manifesting for in advance, you can also assign it here on the calendar and that'll just show up on that day's manifest. Uh, here you've got all of your uh, reference fields. So your uh, sales transaction document ID that'll come over here, order your invoice number, your customer's PO number, that's also a default field. So those are available in the tracking system, available to print out any documents as reference fields. Uh, the department database, you can build up a list of departments that can be used to do some sorting on the historical data, record a cost center that you're shipping on behalf of. Uh, there's also an instructions field. Uh, typically, order header notes can be mapped over or you can capture notes here on the fly. And that most commonly shows up on your bill of lading, your export documents, any place where you need uh, notes there for the driver. Uh, and then you've got uh, user-defined fields all over the place, um, shipment level, package level, pallet level, items, orders, um, and you can easily add these to the system. Uh, same sort of concept as uh, GP Extender, except it's built directly into Starship. So you really have an unlimited number of user-defined fields that you can add. You're not gonna run out of any places to capture data um, inside of Starship anytime soon. So if you max out all the ones we have here out of the box, uh, you can easily add fields. Um, you can decide which entity you want to associate that to. 
give each of those a unique name. And you can also define the type of data that is uh, allowed in that type of field. So lots that you can do with the user defined fields there. They're all exposed to mapping as well. So you can bring over data from GP um, as well as extender into Starship and use that to populate any of those uh, fields. Those are all available to print out as well. Uh, so at this point, we're ready to ship. Um, I've got my carrier and service defined here. Maybe I want to do some rate shopping and take a look at um, what other rates are available. So I can do that by clicking on the dollar sign here or control alt S and that'll call out to all the various carriers, web services, giving me back a list of rates that I can then choose from. Um, you do have access to the browser-based rate quote utility as well. So you can call that from um, within order entry in GP, or you can just call it up here on the desktop. You can have a shortcut that, to that here, and this can be used standalone or with GP as well. At the point that you're ready to process, you can see, uh, you know, it's come, come over as UPS ground here, but there may potentially be some other services out there that could save you some money. So you can see here, you know, both FedEx uh, ground home delivery and the post office are cheaper than UPS ground. So we may want to reroute that with another carrier here. You can then sort that by the cheapest to the most expensive. It'll do that by default. You can also sort on the transit time. So maybe time and transit is more critical or alphabetically here by carrier. We'll go ahead and leave it with the UPS ground uh, that was requested on the order. I'll process this at this point. So F5 or ship and process, that'll generate our tracking, supply the labels, we're gonna print those out, and then all that data is gonna backfeed into GP so you have it there for customer service. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Um, for printing, you can do thermal labels, laser labels, uh, we can also PDF any type of documents. Uh, you've got uh, you know, packing lists and uh, labels. Here you have a kind of a hybrid form that we can produce that'll have the same uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet with both the tracking label for the package and the uh, packing list together on the same form. And these will print uh, together so you can see the exact contents of quantities of product here within that package. These are all highly customizable through a form designer where you can add graphics or logos, barcodes, reference fields, any, any type of customization that you want to do with these forms. Uh, that's all available as well. So here's our second document. And with that, the screen's going to clear. Cursor will go back into the area where you can scan the next order. And then we'll take a look back in GP at the results of that shipment. All right, so there's some main areas that we update out of the box, and then there's some preferences that you can set depending on how you need to integrate that data back to GP. Uh, we have a header and a footer around our notes, so we're not going to wipe out anything that may have been in GP already in the notes field. Um, if we do partial shipments, it'll you know, be tagged here, shipment one, shipment two. If you have multiple warehouses as well, we'll also insert the warehouse that was being shipped from here. But just some general information out of the box, when it went out, when it's going to get there, um, how it was shipped out, number of pieces and weights, and then a little breakdown of the tracking information here, what was shipped out, the quantities of product. You can, uh, of course, have that note contain as much or as little data, so pretty much any field you see on the screen can be grabbed from Starship and inserted into the notes. Uh, you have control of the sequencing and the labeling next to each string of data. Uh, batch ID can be used to uh, tag the batch as it writes back in the GP, letting the front office know that all these transactions have been shipped out. Uh, some people use that to organize uh, which transactions are gonna be invoiced at that point. Um, we can also set an exception batch. So if for some reason the transaction is deleted off the manifest, we can move the transaction into some exception batch that the front office can then go and, you know, do a little more discovery on to figure out uh, what happened with that transaction, you know, letting the customer know that it didn't ship out that day. Uh, freight will deposit here. That can include freight rules for any kind of markup, handling, discounts, however you want to affect the amount of freight that you're passing on to the invoice, even instances where you don't charge freight. Um, so that'll right here to the order freight. We can also deposit um, costs or any other reference information that you want from Starship into user-defined fields. 
So here I've created a simple mapping to take my cost, whatever my exposure on the freight is. So it's going to cost me $58.74 to ship that product. Um, but here you see the marked up amount that we're going to invoice the customer for $67.55. So if you need to do smart list or you want to capture what your costs are on those free freight type of orders, uh, you can easily do some reconciliation and smart list. We can grab really any details uh, that you're looking for and plug it into these user defined fields. Of course, if you max those out pretty easily, uh, then you can you know, grow those options using GP's extender tables. Um, so that with the Starship SQL extension, that opens up options to move data in and out of both applications, or we can merge the GP data with any other data source that you want to pull from. Uh, tracking information here. Uh, so it'll have a tracking number or confirmation number for each one of the packages that you ship. If you're shipping freight, of course, your pro number will populate there. And we'll take a look at an example of that here in just a minute. Uh, some other uh, things that we can do in GP as preferences, if you're using fulfillment orders, we can update the document status here. So we can nudge it along the workflow and you know assign that new numerical status. Uh, ship method, if we freight shop and then we change the service, Starship can backfeed that data to uh, GP to select the other ship method that was actually used on the shipment. We'll always put that into the notes here. So you'll see whatever that service was, but you can also have Starship update the actual ship method on the item or on the header level. Address fields as well. Um, so if you use the address correction feature, you can have Starship update each one of these individual address fields. So like we can put in the zip plus four there. If we've changed the street address, we've capitalized these, any of that address uh, correction information can be populated here. Uh, there is a fulfillment option with Starship. Uh, so if you're short shipping and you don't fulfill all the quantities that are on the order, we can put quantities back onto the order. Uh, Starship's also integrated with uh, Panatrack WMS. So that can all be done on the handheld devices. And then the packed container and uh, verified item counts can be fed to Starship through the handheld device. Um, the actual ship date as well, we can update that in, inside of GP. Again, using the SQL extension, that opens up uh, pretty much any option for any other applications that you may be using or GP extender to both read data into Starship or deposit results from Starship into any place that you need to see them. So it really opens up uh, options for any type of data to move in and out of uh, both the shipping and the, the ERP and the other front end applications that you may be using. All right, we'll take a quick look at the freight process here really no difference in terms of processing you're doing the same sort of workflow so you're going to enter in an order that you want to ship here and based on the ship method or you know you can set weight thresholds within starship that will route it with a freight carrier versus a parcel carrier um, then we'll bring it in as freight really the only difference is that um, you're dealing with palletized orders so you have you know two layers of packaging you have your pallets or skids and then you have your boxes um, with contents uh, underneath um, one of the cool things that Starship can do um, is uh, packaging scenarios where we can have the relationship between a certain quantity of product that goes into a container um, or, you know, how many of those products should go onto a skid. And you can build that out around your items. This is particularly useful if you have items that are sold as case packs or you have prepackaged goods that you need to sell. Uh, Starship can eliminate some of the packing that goes on to drag and drop and manipulate the item quantities by building out these formulas. So you can see a ratio here of the quantity of this particular product. You can see that a dozen of those go into a case. So Starship can automatically package those up, saving you a little bit of time. And you can have that enabled at the item level. Uh, you can import this information in. Um, if you're using a WMS like a Panatrack, we can read that in from external tables. Um, or you can also you know, define it right here on the Starship screen. So this one's already packed up at this point. Um, you know, we can see which items and products are nested in each of the containers. Um, if I wanna add pallets or packages, I can do that here. There's also aggregate packaging with freight where you can just put in the total quantity of boxes, the total quantity of pallets, that the carrier is not assigning a unique tracking number for each carton. Um, I can change the carrier and service here. So you have a list of various common carriers here that can be selected. Uh, if you have the bill of lading module for Starship, even if it's a carrier that uh, we don't directly support, uh, you can easily add carriers and SCAT codes into the system here. 
adding carriers as well as 3PLs. If you're using a logistics company, uh, you can set up a relationship between the logistics company that you're using and the carriers that you want to put underneath them. And then the 3PLs information will show up on your bill of lading. Here we're going to go through and pick an automated carrier. I'm going to go ahead and do the rate shopping again so we can take a look at the rates and see what else is out there and then maybe make an educated decision based on what comes back. Uh, you also have all of your special services here. So customers that require a lift gate or an inside delivery, we can flag that from the customer card and then um, kind of automate that process so the uh, shipper doesn't need to remember those special shipment options for your accessorials. Uh, we brought this one over as Old Dominion, but as you can see here, there are several rates that are available that could potentially beat this that are cheaper. Um, so maybe we want to go with the cheapest, maybe we want to go with the fastest. You'll see some blue rates in here as well. Uh, Starship can get rates from a 3PL called Freight Quote. That's also another option that we offer where you can compare your own contract rates, those here in purple, against the 3PL's rates. We're going to go ahead and award this to r &L as they give us the best price here on this particular shipment. You can also expand that rate here to drill down into what makes up the rate. And you'll see um, some more granularity about uh, what the freight may be, um, the fuel surcharge, um, our discount for freight, any of the um, any of the pricing that makes that up. We could also backfeed that information to GP if you need, you know, to see exactly what the freight charges are, what makes up that freight. If we're ready to tender this load here, I can go ahead and award the business to RNO. You can do that electronically here. That'll upload the information that bypasses the need for us to have to call the carrier or go to the website to book the truck. Uh, we can just do it right here from Starship through the web service. Um, we can also schedule pickups for future dates. Maybe I want to book the truck for tomorrow. We can also give the carrier a range of uh, time here when we're available to be uh, have the goods picked up. So I can say docks available at noon and we close at six o'clock. That'll be factored into the pickup request, making sure that the carrier has the, the capacity to come and pick that up. Uh, you also have options uh, that you can assign, you know, by default for each carrier. So if you have a regular pickup, you may set that up where you don't have to tender the load. The truck comes by every day, or it could be more of an on-demand thing where you have customer routed freight or maybe a smaller uh, local carrier that uh, that's not uh, integrated into Starship in that fashion, where you just need to call a carrier and pick up. So you can always change that on the fly, or you can set that as default preferences for each carrier. Electronically, definitely the easier way to go. So your freight uh, process will be a, pretty much similar to what you do with UPS and FedEx. You're just going to process it through. It's going to hit your account credentials. All right, we've got a little error here asking for commodity information. Uh, so that's another uh, good thing to touch upon here. Actually, the error is probably not a bad thing. Um, Starship keeps track of uh, freight properties for your line items. Uh, so you can set that up to be pulled from the item master or um, it could be uh, stored within Starship itself to know how to handle these goods. So Starship can have the freight class NMFC code or we have groups inside of Starship that can uh, contain all of your uh, various uh, products, how to treat them, and we'll go through each of these here, make sure that's set up. So groups, think of them as more or less a generic product category that you can assign to all of your parts. And that rolls up all the quantities of product rather than listing them out on the bill of lading as individual products. It'll just uh, list a group or product category that you want to associate it to. All right, we'll go ahead and try to process this again. So if the uh, carrier takes our request, we'll get back a confirmation here. Um, it'll process the shipment, print out our labels and documents. Uh, there's a number of different bills of lading available. Um, and then we can feed that data back to GP. Here we have uh, some different samples I can show you. Uh, we can get uh, documents directly from carriers as well. Uh, so a number of carriers can either email those to us or send it back through the uh, API to print out the carrier's format. Uh, Starship also has its own uh, VIX and straight bill of lading built in. So we can populate all of the item data here, the related freight information. There's also the VIX and we have a hazmat bill of lading as well. 
Any of those forms are built into Starship as templates. You can easily modify those. We'll just take a quick peek here at our bill of lading. And you can see any of that information here can be modified with these objects here on the left-hand side. You can add logos or graphics. You can draw on the page, barcodes, bands of text, individual fields. Any of this information can easily be edited and formatted. You can put printing conditions around this to trigger a particular iteration of a form for a particular customer, a certain product. Any of that data can be tied to the, uh, the GP fields that you want to use to trigger which forms should be printed. Um, any of the forms can be PDF'd, uh, so we can save those to a directory um, and then have those pulled by the email notification. Uh, we'll get into that quickly here. Starship has an uh, email uh, template uh, designer here. It can be used to do sort of the same thing as the printed forms where you can add fields, logos, you can do some branding. Uh, one of the cool things is, though, that you can add any of the documents generated out of Starship. So export docs. Uh, bills of lading, packing lists, any of those documents that come out of Starship could easily be attached, pulled from the shipment, and then sent off. Uh, you could also have uh, static files that are pulled from a location on the, on the network, so a copy of um, a catalog, literature, promo material, anything that you want to send out to the customer um, as an attachment can be included with the ship notifications. You have total control over the timing of that. Uh, so those can be done real time. You could sync it up to a particular process or time of day, or those can be queued up and then sent out manually. And you, again, you can put conditions around these to be triggered based on a certain customer, a certain product, a uh, class of a customer, whatever the situation calls for. So hopefully if you're proactively notifying your customers of the tracking information, um, you know, that cuts down on the number of customer service calls you're receiving. Of course, the data is going to be back in GP. Uh, we also give you the dashboard as another way that you can do lookups on the historical data. You've got uh, crystal reports here for doing uh, some in-depth analysis on your freight history. Um, you can use a lot of the same GP ERP data to do sorts here to do lookups on the history. Uh, customer ID, order, invoice number, PO, any of the address fields. You can easily drill down into the shipment. You'll see the order header data here see all the packaging and related tracking information, the status of the shipment, all the products and quantities that shipped, breakdown of the freight charges, and also any special services that were used. So customers that required a lift gate, inside delivery, COD insurance, any of that type of stuff will show up over here. Just another tool we give you that is uh, available with the license. It's browser-based. It's not going to impact your user licensing. Uh, so really any of these utilities you can make available to all the folks uh, in your organization across the board. Okay, Simon, that's uh, just about all of the uh, things I wanted to touch upon as part of the demo. You can open up to any questions now. <clears throat> all right. Well, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Scott. And um, a lot of very useful information. And um, so, as Chris said, I'm going to open it up to any questions that anybody may have um, at this time. Um, so, again, by your name, there is a question you can um, ask, you know, just type in your question and I'll give everyone a few minutes here to do that. Um, and let me see if we uh, have any coming in at the moment. Um, but if you can do that, if you have any particular questions, either on the post office information Scott reviewed um, or Starship in general that Chris can answer, um, please feel free to ask. We do have about 11 minutes or so remaining. Um, and we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. Um, but I do have um, a couple questions here I'll start with. Um, Chris, I think this is for you. Um, I have custom extender fields in GP. Can I integrate this data? Yes, you can. Um, so with GP, we have a SQL extension in Starship that can be used to get to extender fields. Um, if you have that option, then uh, two hours of programming comes with that. So we would just need a specification uh, from the customer on where that data lives and how you want us to make use of that. And then we could uh, roll that into the, uh, the default mappings that we do with GP out of the box. That also opens up options for Starship to take data from um, the shipments and then plug it into Extender or anywhere else that you need to see those results. Great, thank you. Um, another one here for you, Chris. Uh, we use SQL reporting services in-house. Can I access the Starship tables? 
Uh, you can. So if you're using SQL reporting services or SmartList, um, all, all of our data is in SQL. Uh, so you can set it up so that um, you can get at our tables. There are views that are exposed on the database, so you can easily query that using uh, the GP uh, document ID, customer ID, PO number, any sort of uh, field like that that you want to cross-reference the shipment with to extract what you need um, and bring it into an outside reporting platform. Okay, great. All right, another question in. Uh, thanks, Scott. Um, how do you save case lots of products so the product quantity in DIMS import or can use with the packaging dropdown? Okay. Um, well, lot numbers can be imported from GP and associated to the shipment. We don't have prompts that will come up on the GP. Uh, excuse me, the Starship screen to assign those uh, to an item or a particular container. Um, so if they're if they're assigned in GP, then that is a field that can be mapped and then used to be printed. Um, the product, the quantity, and dimensions, um, we can store any of that information inside of the Starship tables here. Uh, so we can build a relationship between the quantity of a particular product and um, the container that it goes into. So let me add one here, and we can say six of these go into a particular box, and we'll pick our medium box, and that can have the contents um, with the number of items and the uh, dimensions of the box stored there. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, next question is uh, from Chrissy. Thank you, Chrissy, for asking. With the rates that are given for LTL or ground packages, would the discount we receive through those carriers be brought over to Starship? Um, I guess I can answer that question. Um, yes, um, you, we basically will bring in over your negotiated rates that you have with the individual carriers. So um, you do um, have that capability um, and those will happen live. So anytime you do make any changes on any agreements, um, those will automatically be updated inside of Starship. Uh, next question from Kelly. Uh, is there a way to do USPS returns for Canada? Either Scott or Chris, uh, if you guys want to answer that one. Yeah, so we can do pay on use um, returns for USPS. And that can be, you know, both domestic or international services. Uh, I think as uh, Scott showed you in one of the slides previously, depending on the service level, you have, I think it was about 8 to 15% discounts available on international mail service. Okay, great. Um, will this webinar be available on the website to show other people who may be interested? Um, the uh, a video, a copy of this um, webinar is going to be updated to our YouTube page, um, but everyone who has registered for this webinar will receive a copy of that, um, of this uh, webinar as well. So this will be going out later today, so everyone should be receiving that to share. Um, what is the price to upgrade from Shipgear to Starship? Uh, Chris, do you want to assist with that one, or do we want to take that offline? Sure. So um, I, I should mention that as one, the follow-up email that you're going to receive with a link to the recording of the webinar, there will also be a special promo in there, so stay tuned for some details on that. Um, there isn't a straight upgrade path. Um, Starship is a perpetual license, and there's uh, pricing surrounding the license itself user seats and modules for the different carriers, whereas Shipgear is a more as a, a software as a service type of license. Um, what I can tell you we can do with Shipgear is whatever investment you have as far as um, prepaid uh, service. If you've you know paid a number of years on the Shipgear platform in advance, then we'll roll over that time and investment onto the, the Starship purchase so you're not going to lose anything there. Um, but there's not a straight upgrade path where it's just a, you know, a swap. Uh, there will be a promo to follow in the, uh, the email though. So stand by for more details on that. 
Okay, great. Thanks, Chris. Um, and in a follow-up to the question on the USPS returns for Canada, Chris, um, I believe they're looking in um, specifically for call tags for Canada. Does Starship have that capability to generate a call tag? Um, yes. So the call tags can be done, you know, um, they call them, you know, UPS returns, FedEx calls them call tags, um, but those are um, paid whether or not the product actually gets returned back to you. So you're processing that as a return and it's a return label that can be processed and stuck into the shipment. Um, if you do it through USPS, then it's pay on use returns. So you can print a USPS label and you're only paying for that postage if the uh, shipping label gets scanned and entered into the tracking system, then you'll be billed for that postage once it's used. Um, I should mention um, there's a little hidden secret here in processing. Um, so you can bring over the order, and if you know that there's going to be a return associated to that, <clears throat> there's a uh, ship and process, but there's also ship process and create return. And what that does is it creates both the outbound label uh, for the goods that you're sending out, and then we'll also produce a return label, so you'll be able to, you know, have that RMA stick that label into the box, and then they can take the product and send it back to you. Uh, so there's a quick and easy way to kind of automate that process by doing kind of two transactions in one. Great, thank you. Um, we have a few minutes left, um, so if you have any follow-up questions, please um, go ahead and ask those. If we can't get to all of them, we will be sure to be following up with each and every one of you after the webinar um, to try to assist uh, with any specific needs you have. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to launch a quick poll here. Um, if you can take a quick minute and just, you know, vote for any of these or all of them that you might um, be interested in. Um, but really the poll is going to be, you know, more aligned of are you interested in that free analysis that Scott was talking about um, having, you know, their team do for us, you know, for you. Uh, to show you where savings can be had with the post office um, or you know are you interested in anything that we reviewed on the starship side and would like more um, detail from chris um, and maybe we can set up a private one-on-one -on -one demo to kind of go through in more detail with you um, on what he's reviewed today so if you could take just a quick minute to fill out either one of these and we'll be sure to follow up with you um, but i don't see any i do have one other question here um, for you, Chris, what does the typical Starship impl implementation timetable look like? Sure thing. Yeah. So um, if you're running ship gear, you can certainly keep that up and running and do it in parallel with Starship. Uh, we typically recommend that you keep it around for usually a month while you're training and getting implemented. And uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve to uh, to cut over to that. Um, our, our current support schedule, we can typically uh, get you onboarded uh, within uh, inside of two weeks, and depending on the scope and the size of that, um, would be broken up into multiple appointments. Um, the initial install, um, there's a, a kickoff call that we'll have with one of our techs that would be assigned as your project manager, and then the initial implementation figure about three to four hours to get it set up. Um, from there, you know, depending on the amount of configuration and training, there would be some additional follow-up sessions, but usually we can get you up and running. Um, you know, well, well inside of a month from the point that you, um, you know, pay for the software, sign off on the project, um, get on board with our support team, and we'll have you live, um, you know, pretty quickly. So it's a fairly rapid implementation. Okay, great. And I have one last question here, and I do have about 50% people who voted so far. So if you can take another 30 seconds or so to go ahead and fill out the poll. Uh, but one last question we have here from John. Um, I apologize if I missed most of the demo. However, I was wondering if Starship has the capability to pick the most economical carrier. Uh, sure. So um, we have that in the clients. Um, we also have the ability to um, display rates here in the rate quote utility, and they'll break it out from the cheapest down to the most expensive. Um, so you can compare all of those side by side. Um, there's also ship via rules that we have where we can have Starship make that decision for you. Um, so you, you have some default rules here that you can have Starship um, rate shop the cheapest, the fastest, or you can define, you know, other parameters based on the weight, based on the zone, based on a customer code. If you want to have Starship automatically pick the, uh, the cheapest or the fastest for you. Great. Well, um, that's all time we have today. I appreciate all the questions. Thank you very much for the participation. 
Um, and I'm going to go ahead and close this poll now. Um, and basically, um, as Chris mentioned, we are offering a special promotion um, that will um, have a 30 day expiration on it from a Starship perspective. So stay tuned on the follow up email that you all receive, um, as well as a free analysis that Scott's team um, is willing to offer as well from the visible supply chain. Um, so again, I appreciate everyone jumping on this afternoon and spending the last hour with us. Hope you found it all to be informative. And if any questions, please don't hesitate, hesitate to reach out. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Have a great day.